look, it's the black holocaust, I knew it was prophecy, a thousand times worse than the Jewish atrocities, uneven playing field, there'll never be a fair score, cause in 1619, that's when they declared war, we the 12 tribes, the ones that the promise reaches, my knee First and foremost, we want to give honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We are the Hebrew Israelites. Uh, we come in day in and day out to talk to our people, the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and indigenous Seminole Indians, to tell them about their biblical nationalities, and also tell them to repent, convert, and come back to the law, sense, and commandments of the Most High. We also are here to give the nations their judgments according to the, to the Psalms, the prophets, and according to the gospel of Jesus Christ as well. Um, Today, um, I kind of wanted to touch on something um, to clear some misconceptions of the Bible and uh, false doctrines uh, that is being that's being perpetuated um, to our people, right? So I want to touch on the heathen, the actual usage of salvific words with the um, with the verbiage of of the usage of the word heathen. Uh, uncircumcised in the heart and also Gentiles uh, which also you read in the New Testament that are also translating to Grecians right so we're going to touch on who Christ came for who he preached the gospel to and who did he disseminate the Apostles to who are the who are the audience of the so-called Old Testament the Apocrypha and also the New Testament uh, so go ahead and bring that up this is the book of Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 30 it says, Wherefore say unto the house of Israel. Of who? The house of Israel. So the subject matter is Israel, correct? Read. It says, Thus saith the Lord God. It says, Are you polluted after the manner of your fathers? Mm -hmm. And you commit ye whoredom after their abominations. So here we have Israel committing abominations. Right? Read. It says, verse 31. For when you offer your gifts, when you make your sons to pass through the fire, you pollute yourself with all your idols. Even unto this day. So here we have here we have Israel participating in idolatry. Right. It says, And shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. It says, And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all that ye say, We will be as the heathen. Hold on, as so the what? As the heathen. So here we have uh, 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 the, the prophet Ezekiel, right? And we're talking, he's talking to Israelites. And he's telling Israelites that you will be as the heathen. So when you look at the word heathen, even, even going back to the New Testament, you will see that the, the word heathen is not exclusive to non-Israelites. You, here you have a, a, a prophet referring to Israelites as heathens. So even when you go into the New Testament, you cannot say that every time the word heathen comes up, on any salvific scripture is only pertaining to non-Israelites because we're going to substantiate that any salvific scripture in the New Testament and just I brought across the, the, the whole collection of books in the Bible is only pertaining to Israelites so that's just one brief example of Israelites being referred to as heathens Go ahead, read the word, read the word. it says in verse 32 and that which come into your mind shall not be at all. That ye say, we will be as the heathen, uh -huh. as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. As the families of the country to serve wood and stone. So why are Israelites being considered or being called heathens? Now let's get into it. Go to uh, the book of Matthew chapter 18. We're going to elaborate on why these Israelites are being called heathens. According to prophecy. Right? Matthew 18, 13. This is the book of Matthew. Uh huh. Chapter 18, verse 15. Uh huh. It says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. If thy brother shall trespass against thee. Against thee, right? Read. It says, Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Uh huh. It says, If, if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Right. It says, But. If he will not hear thee, mm -hmm. then it says, then take with thee three or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. Mm -hmm. Verse 17, and if he shall neglect to hear them, 
It says, tell it unto the church. <coughs> but if he neglect to hear the church, uh -huh. let him be as a heathen man. As a what? As a what? Mm -hmm. As a heathen man. So we have Israel being considered or referred to as a heathen in the Old Testament, according to the prophet Ezekiel. And now we have in the New Testament, so-called New Testament, Israelites being considered heathen. Why? Because he didn't follow the law. As you read these scriptures, you're, you're going to realize that they're literally telling you, if you have a quarrel with a brethren, there's a certain, certain protocols according to the law which you have to fulfill. There's steps. First, you talk to him in person, in private. If he doesn't want to listen, you bring two witnesses. If, they don't, if, they don't, if he doesn't want to listen, you bring it to the church. But if he doesn't listen to the church, right, then he will be considered a, a heathen man, right? Now, let's go to... Uh, Deuteronomy 28.64 This is the book of 2nd Ezra uh, chapter 2 I'll start at verse 33 huh? It says, I Ezra received the charge of the Lord upon the Mount Oreb mm -hmm. that I should go unto Israel mm -hmm. but when I came unto them they set me at night and despised the commandments of the Lord Despised the commandments of the Lord That's the point, go ahead it says, and therefore I say unto you, uh -huh. O you heathen. O who? O you heathen. So here we have another example in the Apocrypha, right, where Israel, Israelites are being called heathens. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're not keeping the commandments, law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Yeah. That hear and understand, look for your shepherd, he will give you everlasting rest, for he is not at hand that shall come in the end of the world. Exactly. So let's go transition to Deuteronomy 2864. Now we have to understand that the whole Bible has one audience as far as all the nations that are of the creation of the Most High, right? That's right? Out of all the nations, the Bible is designated and is beeline for one specific nation, and it's Israel. We Israel is the center of the Bible, and everybody is the backdrop or the background of Israel. That's literally what the Bible is about. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and 64. It says, and the Lord shall scatter thee. The what? And the Lord shall scatter thee. The Lord is going to scatter Israel, right? Go ahead. Among all people. Among who? Among all people. So that's when you have Israelites are among all people, among all nations, on the four corners of the earth. Go ahead. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. So Israelites are scattered all over. This is one of the main reasons during the time of Christ that he sent the apostles to specific places where who dwell? Israelites dwell. Who subscribe to their citizenship. That's why you have people calling themselves Greeks. People calling themselves Romans. Etc. It says, And there shalt thou serve other gods. And serve other gods. What is the first commandment? Thou shalt not have other gods before me. Go ahead. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, uh -huh. even wood and stone. Now, wood and stone is synonymous for different uh, um, pagan uh, religions, right? Pagan traditions. But it also is not excluded from what? Christianity. What, are, what, are, what do you see every time you go to a Christian church? A wooden cross. What do you see when you go to, uh, to what? When you deal with Muslims, right? To Mecca. What do they have over there? The Kaaba stone. Both, both doctrines, the people that subscribe to both religions do one come, have one commonality. They both kneel and worship the cross. They both kneel and worship the Kaaba stone. Both of them do that. So this is not, this is not a, 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 a coincidence. This is not irony. Let's go to Jeremiah 9, 16. We're going to further, we're going to further substantiate it. Right? We're going to further substantiate why Israelites, according to the scriptures as a whole, were called heathens. It's not exclusive to non-Israelites. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 16. It says, I will scatter them also among the heathen. So, as we were scattered among the heathen, we also picked up their heathen customs. Go ahead. It says, um, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, uh -huh. and I will send a sword after them until I have consumed them. Right? A sword after them, because why? They broke the law, statutes, and commandments. Why were Israel, why were Israelites scattered across all nations? 
the bottom line is because they were unfaithful to the Most High. They turned their backs to the Most High, to the Creator, to the Creator of the, of, of the universe. And they broke the law. The circumstance or the result of them breaking the law put them in a situation where they were scattered among all nations, heathen nations, where they never, they never dwelt before. Now let's go back to the New Testament, right? Let's go to Paul. Go ahead. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 2 and the ninth verse. Uh -huh. It says, And when James, Cephas, and John, uh -huh. who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, uh -huh. they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, uh -huh. that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. So we have heathen. Why, are the, why does it say heathen and circumcision? The circumcision are considered what? Jews. Right? That participated in the law. What's the law? You have to be circumcised. And then you have the heathen. Why are they considered heathens? Because they didn't subscribe to the law or they didn't follow the law or bare, or a bare minimum didn't even subscribe to the biblical nationality as being Israelites. Partaking part of the 12 tribes of Israel. Right? Now let's go to... Uh, now... Okay, go ahead. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 1 and the 16th verse. Mm -hmm. I'll start at 15. It okay. says, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, uh -huh. and called me by his grace, uh -huh. it says, To reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Mm -hmm. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Okay. Uh -huh. So here we have, we're going to get into why he was sent to, to the heathens. The heathen are who? Israelites who didn't follow the law. Sure. Right? Now let's get into when it talks about circumcision, right? A lot of people use the phraseology uncircumcised in the heart. But they say that that's only pertaining to who? Non-Israelites. Let's demonstrate throughout the compilation of the Bible how that phraseology is specifically designated and utilized for Israelites. Alright? So let's go to Acts 7.51. Let's bring that out. Let's start, let's jump start with the so-called New Testament, right? Now we're gonna jump around. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, to substantiate that the, 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 the phraseology of uncircumcising the heart is literally designed for Israelites. Go ahead. Uh, this is the book of Acts, chapter 7, in the 51st verse. It says, you can explain. Oh, okay. Spirit. 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 7 and 51, it says, you, st you stiff neck and uncircumcised. Hold on. You stiff neck and uncircumcised. Even the phraseology of what? You stiff neck. You read about the whole Bible and when it talks about you stiff neck, it's talking about Israelites. That's right. So even when you read to the nitty gritty of how each, each thing, what it means, right? The wording of the, of the scripture in itself is already starting up with ye stiff neck. Who pertains that to? Israel. Go ahead, read that again, bro. Acts chapter 7 and verse 51. Mm -hmm. It says, you stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. So we can say that if you were a so-called Israelite, right, a descendant of, of the torture to Israel, and you weren't following the law, it's, 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 it's pretty clear to say that there, there's a high probability that this person was not circumcised of the flesh. Right? Go ahead. It says, you stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Uh -huh. You do always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. As your fathers did. So he not only was, was, was this person uncircumcised of the flesh, but he's also uncircumcised of the heart. What does that mean? This person is not following the law, stats, and commandments of the Most High. Just like, how can we substantiate that? Because it says, as your fathers. There's no way that you can go in the so-called New Testament and utilize as your fathers to a heathen, a non-Israelite, or a Gentile, a non-Israelite. Why? Because the law was not given to them. Why? Because they did not cross the Red Sea, exegeting who? Or exiting what? Egypt. The first covenant was not given to everybody. It was given to who? The forefathers of Israel. All right. All right, so let's go to, um, uh, did you read 16? Yeah, I'm reading 51. Oh, so like, okay, go. So let's go to Deuteronomy 10. Let's go to Deuteronomy 10. Uh, 
read verse 15 and 16. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse uh, 15. It says, Only Yahweh had a delight in thy fathers. In, the, in thy fathers. Read. To love them. It says, And he chose their seed after them. Seed after them. It's talking about the seed of like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Go ahead. It says, Even you above all people. Above who? Above all, all people. Above all people. Read. As it is this day. Huh? It says, Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart. Not the foreskin of the genitalia. It's talking about circumcise the foreskin of your heart. So when we read in the New Testament, circumcising the heart, that phraseology was used in ancient times to be referred to who? Israelites. That phraseology is exclusive to Israelites. This is in the Torah. Finish it up. It says, and be no more stiff-necked. And be no more stiff-necked. Did we read, ye stiff-necked people? Did we read that? So here we have even the word usage of the scripture in the New Testament is the same thing that's been spoken of in the Old Testament regarding who? Israelites. Uh -huh. Finish 16, is that it? Yeah. Go to Deuteronomy 36. Let's deal with the Torah for a brief second. And then we'll jump back to the, to the, new, to the new Testament. So we're, we're going to demonstrate how the whole compilation of the Bible, the, the, the compilation of books in the Bible, are have a harmony, have a core, which is the law. And the law for who? For Israel. Everything you talk about according to the Psalms, the Prophets, Torah, right? The Psalms, the Psalms, Apocrypha, everything comes back, it, 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 go, it comes back to the, to the law. Go ahead. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 6. Uh, it says, And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. Here we have again, circumcision of the heart. The Lord thy God will circumcise what? The heart. The heart. Now the genitalia, but the heart. What does that mean? He's going to bring you back to his laws. He's going to teach you about his laws. Right. It says, and the heart of thy seed, to love thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. So, Jesus Christ came to redeem his people back to the biblical nationality, the so-called heathen Israelite, or the Gentile Israelite, to come back to the law of sins and commandments, so that, so for what? So that they may live. That's what it means to be circumcised of the heart. Coming back to something that you were once, that you were once, that you were, that you once were. So like, you understand? Now let's go to uh, Jeremiah 4, verse 4. We're gonna deal with the uncircumcised of the heart. And we're going to substantiate precept upon precept, old, new, apocrypha, that it says the same thing. Go ahead. Verse 4. Yeah, verse 4. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, and the fourth verse. Uh -huh. It says, Then the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, I'm giving you various um, witnesses, right? I'll give you Moses. Now let's go to Jeremiah. I gave you Matthew. Right? Now I'm giving you different witnesses. I'm giving you different people saying the same thing throughout the Bible. Go ahead. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, in the fourth verse. Read. It says, Circumcise yourself to the Lord Yahweh. Circumcise yourself to the Lord Yahweh. Read. It says, And take away the foreskins of your heart. Again, take away the foreskins of your heart. This is not a new testament concept. This is not a, 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 Christ, a Christological concept. This is not something that Christ made up. This is not something that he himself established. This is not new. The Bible says that there's nothing new under the sun. Go ahead. It says, and take away the foreskins of your heart, you men of Judah. Of who? Judah. Judah. Everybody. Judah. Read. And inhabitants of Jerusalem. Of who? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Go ahead. It says, lest my fury come forth like fire uh -huh. and burn that none can quench it uh -huh. because of the evil of your doing. Because of the evil of your doings. So when you don't follow the last and commandments of the Most High, you are doing wickedness. You are doing evil against the Most High. This is why he's saying, using the phraseology, circumcise of the heart. Circumcise your foreskin of your heart. 
Come back to the law. So it, it kills me when you have these dumb Christians that want to exegete this phraseology in the New Testament and say, oh, we don't have to keep the law anymore. But every phraseology that is utilized in the New Testament as, as far as salvific scripture, you can see it demonstrated in the Old Testament. Come on. Figure that out. It says, um, Oh, that's it? Oh, that's, uh, that's it. Okay, go ahead. I mean, that's written, man. You want to go to 2-6? Uh, well, that's it, Pastor. Okay. Uh, that was Jeremiah 4, 4 right? Right. Okay, go to Jeremiah 9, 26. Watch this. We're going to go, we're going to stick another precept on, on the prophet Jeremiah, right? Talking about the subject matter at hand. Go ahead. This is the book of Jeremiah, uh -huh. chapter 9, and verse 26. Uh -huh. It says, Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Ammon uh -huh. and Moab uh -huh. and all that are in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness mm. for all these nations are uncircumcised. These nations are uncircumcised. All these nations are uncircumcised. But they're uncircumcised as what? In the flesh. Right? Now go ahead and finish that up. In all the house of Israel. The house, now here's, here's, here's the transition. In all the house of Israel, what? Are uncircumcised in the heart. In the heart. There's a distinction. The heathens, the real heathens, the non-Israelites, are uncircumcised in the flesh. But the Israelites that are that are that are not participating according to the scriptures, participating and subscribing to the law, they are considered what? Uncircumcised in the heart. Mm. What does that mean? Knowledge of the law, mm. keeping of the law, teaching of the law. In the uh, you know, in the question, in the uh, the heathens, they are uh, uncircumcised not only in the heart. But, in the flesh as well, right? exactly. but that it doesn't it just but that's why it says uncircumcised and then it gives a, a specific a specific notation as far as Israelites are, were going to be uncircumcised of the heart. Meaning, for example, I'm gonna give you an example. If a brother walks down here today and I ask him, what is your biblical nationality? Mm -hmm. What is the most common hey, hey, hold on, brother? Hey, what no, 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 we're not doing that. Don't be disrespectful. Listen, don't do that. I don't know what's the point. I don't believe that. It's true. No disrespect to you, brother. It's all good. You're, you just stay here and listen to me. Yeah. If I ask this brother, right? Hey, brother, what's your, what's your, what's your biblical nationality? He's not But if you ask it, the so called Israelite, right? According to the scripture, the so called Negro, Hispanics, with indigenous similar Indians, right? If I ask a Negro coming down the stairs, hey. Brother. Relax, man. What is you doing? No, you're not standing right there. What's wrong with you? Chill out, man. Come listen to the Bible, man, and relax, man. You're tripping, man. But get it back on point. If you ask a so-called Negro, right? If you ask a Negro, what is your biblical nationality? He's going to say what? Oh, I'm African-American. I'm black. I'm everything. I'm, he's going to give you a byword. And everything except being an Israelite or giving you a specific tribe, right? So that's the same thing that was going on in the time of Jesus, right? Uh, go ahead and bring that on Ezekiel 44. Ezekiel 44. Ezekiel 44. Ezekiel 44. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 44, in the seventh verse. Huh? It says, uh, it says, And that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart. Listen, listen, pay attention to this. This is, this is a crucial point. This is a crucial point. This is Ezekiel 44 and 7. Hey, move that camera. Move that camera. I don't want to look at that. Move that camera. Ezekiel 44 and verse 7. Read out. It says, In that you have brought into my sanctuary strangers uncircumcised in heart. So here we have strangers being considered uncircumcised of the heart. Saying you have brought strangers to my what? To my sanctuary, uncircumcised of the heart. This is the book of Ezekiel. What is Ezekiel talking about? Strangers, uncircumcised of the heart. We just established through precept upon precept that when you have uncircumcised of the heart, it's talking about Israelites. Why are Israelites being considered as strangers? Go ahead. And there's something else too. The way that it just it, it broke down how the other nations are uncircumcised, but it says Israel was uncircumcised by the heart because Israel, the, where the law is given to, oh. would show that the, these other nations are not underneath the covenant. You know what I'm saying? Or they would be uncircumcised in the heart. 
but the laws weren't given to them. That's why there's a difference. All right, my bad. Where was that? Uh, seven. Um, verse 7. It says, And that you brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart, and uncircumcised in flesh. Hey, hold on. Uncircumcised of the, in the heart, and also uncircumcised in the flesh. Now he's being very, very specific. Go ahead. It says, To be in my sanctuary, to pollute it, even my house, when, when you offer my bread, the fat and the blood, and they have broken my covenant. My, so here we go. Broken my covenant. So even if you want to play a game with uncircumcised of the heart and uncircumcised of the flesh, it says my covenant. When you read Romans 9.4, it says that all the covenants, old and new, were given unto who? Israel. Who were Israelites. And we're right. going to get that. Yeah. We're going to get that too. We're going to bring it out. Go and ahead. it says, um, have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. Because of all their abominations. Mm. How do you, how were they causing abominations? By not keeping the law. Because if you, when you read the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14, it says, you are blessed if you keep my commandments. Right? Paraphrasing it. But then when you go to verse 15, what does it say? But if you don't keep my commandments, you become whoremongers, idolaters, murderers, like, uh, 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 um, um, what's the other thing? Um, and liars, right? That's how you you make abominations or you create abominations, by not keeping the law. Go ahead, finish that up. Verse 8. Okay, uh, verse 8. It says, and you have not kept the charge of my holy things. Kept the charge of my holy things. Go ahead. But you have said keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourself. Go to me. Go to me. All the way to me. Okay, verse 9. Uh -huh. It says, thus saith the Lord God, no stranger, uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary. So hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, listen to what he just said. Nobody that's uncircumcised of the heart and uncircumcised of the flesh is what? It says, shall enter into my sanctuary. So how can you be a non-Israelite and be able to enter into the sanctuary when being uncircumcised of the flesh is talking about the law? Who was the law given to? Israelites. So-called Christianity is going to tell you, oh, you don't have to keep the law. What is that telling you? You don't have to get circumcised in the flesh. So even that doctrine doesn't fall in line with the prophecy. The same time prophecy. In the kingdom, you can even come to the sanctuary if you're not, not only do you have to be circumcised of the heart, but you gotta be uh, uh, circumcised of the flesh. That's future prophecy. That's a future prophecy. Go ahead, read that. So I'll read it again. Read that again. Uh, verse nine. Uh -huh. it says, are bugs, it's not good. Go ahead, go ahead. This is Ezekiel 44, verse 9. Uh -huh. It says, Thus saith the Lord God. It says, No stranger, uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. So listen, any strangers that is among the children of Israel. What does that mean? It's talking about Israelites. It, it, then he also prophesied. We're gonna to get to that too. Prophesied most a lot of uh, the prophets prophesied that in the end times, Israelites were going to be cut off from their heritage. That's right. That's why when you look at this chart right here from the Western Hemisphere, you see Negroes, Hispanics, and Indigenous Seven Indians. Oh yeah, turn it off. This chart itself, this chart right here, 